So as Wendy mentioned, I'm from El Paso, Texas. Anybody know El Paso here? Okay, oh wow. So it's a big military town, right? We have Fort Bliss, which is a big military town. So El Paso is a lot like San Diego, except we don't have an ocean and we have more rocks. <laughs> Otherwise, it's very similar. <laughs> and um, in my parents' house, right next to the side of the house, there's a patch of dirt. And there's a spigot with a hose. And when I was seven years old, I would turn on that hose and I'd wet down the, the patch of dirt. And then I would start to build little mud houses, little mud roadways, little mud bridges, and it was just me and my imagination. I'm sure all of you, when you were seven years old, you, you can relate to that. And then I would bring out my Tonka toys. Do they still make them? Do they? Okay. So I didn't have many. I had two Tonka toys, and one was a truck. And I think I had one Hot Wheel. And I would get in the ground, and I would pretend I was the truck driver driving through that little village I had created out of mud. And it was so much fun. Being seven years old, you don't have to worry about insurance. You don't have to worry about the mortgage or the rent or kids. <laughs> And when I wrote this song that I'm going to play for you, it reminded me of that moment when I was seven years old, and I called it Sandbox. So I'm going to invite you for a little audience participation. I want you to grab a hold of your favorite seven-year-old childhood memory. I'm going to give you a few moments. You can be six or eight. It doesn't matter, but okay, I'm going to give you a few moments. You didn't think this was going to be a therapy session, did you? <laughs> Okay, so grab a hold of that memory when your favorite memory when you didn't have a worry in the world. And then as I play this piece, Sandbox, grab a hold of that memory.
Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Isn't being a kid great? I hope that you went down memory lane and you, you felt all those endorphins, like, oh my God, isn't life wonderful being a kid? And as an adult, we take life too seriously. I mean, I know I do. But when I play that song, it reminds me of how not to take life seriously and how important it is for us to like just relax, be a kid again. You know, life, life goes on, be a kid. Uh, it makes it life so much easier, so much more enjoyable. And speaking of enjoyable, one of the things I love to do is dance. Do we have any dancers in here? Okay, boy, she raised her hand really fast. <laughs> and then there was a second in close place. Right? Well, you know when you go to a wedding reception, right? And then the father-daughter dance finishes, they get off, and there's always that first person who's on the dance floor, and they're dancing and dancing, and second hour, they're still dancing, and you're looking at them, and you're slightly embarrassed for them, but you're slightly envious, saying, why can't I be having that much fun? Well, that's me on the dance floor. I'm out there. And then when the last call for the last dance is, I go home and I take a Tylenol and an ibuprofen. Because <laughs> my back and my knees are hurting me. Anyway, there is a point to this story. Uh, this uh, next piece I'm going to play for you is, um, it has a little bit of a tango flavor. And I was thinking, OK, what do I title this song? Because my pieces are instrumental, so titles mean a lot to me. And I said, of course, you know, who dances the tango better than people in Buenos Aires, Argentina? So I went to Google, and I typed in, where do the locals in Buenos Aires dance the tango? And it took me to this listing called El Parque La Glorieta de Belgrano. That's a tongue twister, right? So basically, it's the park of Glorieta de Belgrano. And, um, and so I looked at the, at the images section, and it's a beautiful park. It's actually a historical uh, monument, I believe, in Argentina. About two square blocks, and then there's a big, giant gazebo in the middle. And then I went over to the video section, and then I hit one of the videos, and it's just the locals dancing, not dressed fancy. Kind of like me, you know, not dressed fancy. I have torn jeans. <laughs> and then they're dancing the tango. And I said, you know what? I think I have a title for my piece. Glorieta de Belgrano.
Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so hopefully, if I could dance for you and play the piano at the same time, I would. But of course, I think I'll leave that to Jerry Lee Lewis. Is that who did that? <laughs> but I even need this foot for my pedal, so I couldn't dance for you. Uh, but isn't dancing fun? Um, OK, so I have a question, and you don't have to raise your hand. But who here has been in love? OK, OK, okay well, great. We have a brave soul there. This is love grand. I mean, all those endorphins. I've been in love plenty of times. Second grade, fourth grade, sixth grade, of course, high school, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th. <laughs> but I just, I haven't been in love that many times. But you know, when you have that new love and you go out to dinner and you have that romantic dinner for two, you have the fine linen, you have the fine china, you have the wine glass. I'm setting the stage for my next piece. You have the candle lit, you have a rose right in the middle. And of course, a romantic dinner for two can't be complete without background music. As with this piece, which is called Dinner for Two.
Thank you. Thank you. Isn't, isn't love grand? Being in love, even unrequited love, when they don't know you exist, even that's grand. You plan your wedding out, how many kids you're going to have, and they don't even know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, love has the opposite side. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a downside to, to love, right? Right? Who has, had, who, who has had their heart broken? Oh, fewer hands. That's good. <laughs> I've had my heart broken. Second grade, fourth grade, <laughs> sixth grade, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth grade. I just, I haven't had my heart broken that many times. But... Um, but this next piece is all about having your heart broken. And it's a really dreadful title. It's called, <laughs> it's called Last Chance at Love. Isn't that just dreadful? <laughs> I mean, you've had to have your heart really broken to, to title a song Last Chance at Love. I, was, I must have been channeling something. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so I actually wrote a poem about it. And I'm going to go over there to read the poem to you. Okay, a little bit about my poetry. So, for every piece that I write, I write a poem. And the poem's about the visualization, the experience, what I'm feeling, and that's what the poem is about. So when I was writing this next piece that I'm gonna play for you, Last Chance at Love, I was just seeing two people that just didn't work out. And one of them was, was terribly, terribly hurt. And since I need glasses, you blaze into my life, a star falling, powered by a moonless night, unbridled, quenchless, intoxicated when we forget those around us exist, when God is called upon to preside in this warm and heavy room. I open my eyes. The morning light from the wood frame window is white. The color of heaven, the color of clouds on a sunny day, the color of a picket fence that sits on the road. The light dances to the coos of the morning dove calling for its mate. I reach for you. But you stand alone in the center like a soldier in uniform ready for the general's orders, ready to win fake medals of damsels and maidens to decorate your breast pocket. A wordless exit. A door that closes. A painful echo into my eternity. I gasp to breathe amidst the tears that caress my cheeks, my neck, like you used to taste the salt of my skin. I taste the salt of my tears like I taste my own blood when I cut my finger with a kitchen knife. Dripping, slow, faster, with every squeeze, faint, dizzy, downward, the kitchen counter, where's the bandage? Where's the doctor? I need sutures. I need this to stop. Aloneness knows no friend, even in the brightest of mornings. My stillness, a corpse in a crime scene, breathes its lifeless breath, beats its heartless beat, covered by a sheet of bloodless tears, destined to walk this road bereft.
Thank you. Thank you. Boy, isn't that a sad song? <laughs> I like this part. Might stab me in the heart. <laughs> There, there's my Barry Manilow coming out. <laughs> uh, I'm distressed. <laughs> but it's really like, it's, it's, I mean, anyway, you get it, right? <laughs> well, um, so I have a couple of mottos in my life. We all have mottos, right, that we live by. So one of my mottos is carpe diem, seize the day. Everybody knows that one, right? Make the most of life. You know, you got to make the most of life. And then there's the more poetic version, which I also like, because of course I'm a poet. Die with memories, not with dreams. Have you heard that one? Isn't that wonderful? Die with memories, not with dreams. That means, you know, for me, it's like, when I get to 95% of my life behind me, I want to be able to say, you know what, I've got all these memories that I did what I needed to do to be the best version of myself I could be. And part of that is sharing my music. So if there's one takeaway, when you go home and you're driving with your, with your boyfriend or girlfriend or spouse or by yourself, carpe diem. Die with memories, not with dreams. And that's what this next piece is about. It's called passion.
Well, that's wonderful work that uh, they're doing there at the Dibniki Krakow Initiative. And uh, as I said earlier when I started, uh, I can't even begin to imagine what they're going through, but all of these refugees is having to be displaced from your home, from your friends. And then I'm sure that many of them are experiencing um, lives that they've lost, family members that they've lost. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's great that we're all doing our part to do this. Um, I'd like to dedicate this next piece um, to those who have been lost in Ukraine and to the family members who have lost. Um, when I wrote this piece, uh, I stumbled onto some chords that just really resonated with me. And as I closed my eyes to kind of explore those chords, um, all I could see was having closed my eyes for the last time. And life can be a literal and a figurative battle sometimes. And as I was writing this piece, the tears started running down the nose, my nose onto my fingers and onto the keys. And I kept writing, I kept feeling it. Um, and I kept seeing this image of my bruised and battered body being held in the arms of an angel. And the voice was saying, it's okay now, you're home. And I titled this piece, Wings of an Angel.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my, uh, my sincere wish is that um, this tragedy in Ukraine uh, pass soon. Uh, as you can see, I get my inspiration to write music from all different kinds of sources. Uh, I see something, I experience something, I literally stumble onto notes and I say, wow, that sounds really interesting. Um, and I was going through a writer's block not too long ago and I couldn't find my next melody. And I was like, where is it? And I was looking and looking. I improvise to try and find that next inspiration. Like nothing was happening. So my dad passed away in 2016, so it's been about six years, but I still talk to him. And I was saying, Dad, I need some inspiration. You know, so I closed my eyes and I kept looking and then I stumbled onto some chords. And I said, wow, that's interesting. And for the next two hours, it became a conversation between me and my dad about how to write this piece. Well, let's go here. Well, let's go there. And how about this bridge? And I titled it Running with the Sun, S-U-N. But for those of you who are poets, it could also be heard as running with your son. And guess what? I wrote a poem about it. So I'm going to read that to you. Death is a thin curtain for those who see the sunshine through the woven fabric. And that's my favorite part of this poem, but I'm going to read it again. <laughs> Death is a thin curtain for those who see the sunshine through the woven fabric. I draw it open, stepping into a world to run with the sun. Time does not move here. I have no watch on my wrist. No phone in my pocket. No bell tower to ring on the hour. Time stands still, for I hold the rays. They do not scathe me. They run through me. In yellow gold, they fill my senses like a monarch butterfly in the breeze. I am alive. Each flap, a tiny earthquake. My cocoonless body rises. The light shines through and it warms me. I smell the sage. Lavender blankets the hills. I hear the hummingbirds and the bees. They know my song, they sing for me. I drift into the distance, but I am already there. On the other side, the sun sets. Forever a morning that becomes the sunrise. And this piece is called Running with the Sun.
Thank you. Thank you. This next piece is called Beginnings. Thank you. So um, when I graduated from high school at all of 18 years old, El Paso, Texas, it was time to go to college. So I packed up all of my very limited and meager belongings into a blue pleather suitcase. <laughs> Do you remember those? <laughs> Who had a, bl a pleather suitcase? <laughs> You don't have to admit it. <laughs> it's, so, it's, it's such a vivid memory. 
of, and it was about yay wide, like four feet wide, maybe three feet, maybe three and a half feet tall. And my parents took me to the Greyhound station. And so I got on the Greyhound station. This is very movie-esque, right? I got on the Greyhound station, and I went all the way up to Napa Valley, California, to a small liberal arts school up there. Beautiful country, very different from El Paso, Texas. <laughs> no water, water. Cacti, no cacti. Mountains, hills. And wine, of course, you can't forget the wine. Um, so when you're 18, for those of you who are not 18 yet, I think I see a couple out there. When you're 18, 19, 20, you know, it's like you're on your own for the first time and you're having to make these decisions. You're having to find yourself. And I was no exception. I was trying to find myself. And I won't go into the details, but you know what? I had a hard time finding myself. And when I was feeling particularly sad, I'd get into my beat up blue Volkswagen Rabbit. It had dents, it had maybe a couple of cracked windows, it had rust, I'm surprised it even ran. But I'd get in there and I'd go down to Chrissy Park in San Francisco. Does anybody know the park? Okay, it's a beautiful park. And San Francisco, of course, is always cloudy and rainy and Chrissy Park is right on the bay. And when I would park there, I'd see Alcatraz off to the right. I'd see an occasional brave sailboat kind of sailing in the drizzle slash rain. And of course, the Golden Gate Bridge on the left. And then the gloomy clouds that hung over the towers of the Golden Gate. And sometimes when you're feeling lonely and sad, it helps to be with somebody who can sympathize and give you a listening ear, you don't feel so bad. Well, for me, that someone was that San Francisco Bay right in my car. It felt and it looked like how I was feeling inside. And when I wrote this next piece, it reminded me a lot about that moment in my Volkswagen Rabbit, occasional windshield wipers seeing the rain and hearing the rain pitter-patter on the tin roof of my car. And I called it San Francisco Rain.
Thank you. Thank you. So uh, before I play my last uh, piece for the afternoon, um, I want to again thank Reverend Wendy for inviting me. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, not only that, for allowing me to share in this really wonderful anniversary celebration. So congratulations, happy birthday to all of you. And of course, not only that, but to raise funds for a wonderful cause. It's been such a, such a, a wonderful feeling to be part of something that's gonna really have an impact on the individual lives of, of refugees in, in Poland, and that's really important. Um, a couple of things also. I want to thank my cellist, Peter Ko. <laughs> and then um, for those of you who still use CDs, because I know a lot of people still are now streaming them or downloading them, uh, there will be some available in the lobby. So feel free to stop by, actually, and also say hi. And for those of you who don't use CDs but stream your music, I'm available on Apple Music and Amazon Music and Spotify, so just tell Siri, Siri, Esteban Ramirez, piano. And then let's see what she says. <laughs> <laughs> tell me what she says. <laughs> She'll take us to you. Okay, great, great. So I want to uh, do one more poem, which is going to be dedicated to um, the people of Ukraine and I will make my way over to the podium. Um, this poem is about sunlight. Sunlight is wonderful, isn't it? It gives us vitamin D, it wakes us up in the morning, it gives us energy. We see it go down and then again it comes up in the morning. I love sunlight. And right now, it's a really dark and cloudy time in, the, in Ukraine. And uh, my sincere desire is that the sun shine again in Ukraine. This poem is all about the sun that shines in our living rooms, in our day-to-day -day lives. Come in, dear friend. Mi casa es tu casa. Hug me with your warmth and I you with my arms. Take a seat, dear friend. Warm the gray cushions of my sofa, place your arms on its armrest, rest your feet on my wooden floor. Your happiness fills me with joy. Your laughter echoes through the chambers of my heart. It's good to see you, dear friend. Like a stream, you flow from the highest of hills through and around the valleys and mountains. How long has it been? My newborn eyes, my skateboard falls, my father's funeral. We have so many memories. Your family to me, knowing what to say, knowing exactly how to say it. A full schedule awaits to see family and friends, a dog or two, goldfinches flying high. They all look forward to seeing you. Before night falls, we'll say goodbye. Make plans to see each other again in the morning, dear friend. And I'll end with this piece called Fly With Me because it's how I feel when I share my music with everybody and I want them to fly with me.